congratulations on a, on a, on a great project, dude. Moon Knight. I've seen the first four and it's, it's just awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's cool. So they're bringing everybody back from the OG Spider-Man movies. You produced those <laughs> Spider-Man movies almost 20 years ago for some of them. Toby's back. Sam yeah. Raimi's back with Marvel. You're back with Marvel. I want to start there. How has the experience compared? Uh, what kind of changes have you experienced in these types of projects? Uh, you know, the, the change is not a lot because I will say this, and I, I know you know this. Whether it was Spider-Man, whether it's Iron Man, whether it's Guardians of the Galaxy, I think one of the true geniuses that is Kevin Feige is all of these Marvel stories are anchored in intense character explorations. And that's what makes these unique. That's what makes them so good. All this incredible spectacle gets added afterwards, and it's an incredible journey, an incredible ride um, that Marvel is truly at the top of their game. But I think, you know, th that's why there's, there's, also, there's always a freshness, but there's always a familiarity because everything is anchored in character. So the stuff we were doing on Spider-Man, man, I took a lot of stuff that I learned from Sam, applied it to Moon Knight. You know, it's always character first. Sam was always saying, if you don't care about Peter Parker, you're not going to soar with him through the caverns of New York. Same thing with Mark Spector, with Stephen Grant, with Moon Knight. If you don't care about Mark Spector and Stephen Grant, you're not going to really care what happens to Moon Knight. And so you just take that journey and those learnings from, from Sam, from Kevin, from storytellers at the top of their game, from Lou, Victoria, Brad, um, and obviously the great actors like Tobey Maguire and then Oscar Isaac and Ethan Hawke, Mae Kalamaui. Uh, man, for me, I feel blessed. Lightning struck twice, Spider-Man, Moon Knight. I'll take them both. That's awesome, dude. I would love, do you, do you and Sam or Toby keep up now? Have you had a chance to swap secrets on your projects or collaborate at all? <laughs> well, no secrets. Cause we all signed the NDA, <laughs> <Y 'all>, but, <laughs> sure. but I can tell you, Sam's an amazing man. Uh, I love that guy and I, I can't wait to see what he does with Dr. Strange. And I, I just, I, I love him as a storyteller. Yeah, I, th well, I think we're all big fans of Sam here. Uh, when, when you guys started cracking the story of Moon Knight, uh, were you taking a look at classic Moon Knight books from like the 80s or some of the more recent stuff like Jeff Lemire's runs uh, in, in the recent years? Uh, what do you think are the core elements from comics that really summarize like the character you wanted to deliver in live action? Yeah, you know, my friend, I, we were going back to 1975 and Werewolf by Night because, you know, that's where he got launched in issues 32 and 33. Mm -hmm. And then bounced around in some Marvel IP, which we took to look at in the, the next five years until 1980, he got his own comic. Um, and then we looked at 1980 on, um, read every, every comic. And I think what we were really focusing on when we were starting the writer's room of Moon Knight is not necessarily one particular issue or one particular run. We were starting to single out what are the themes and the tones that are consistent throughout Moon Knight's journey through the decades. And once you start looking at that, you start picking up on, you know, the very Indiana Jones-esque globetrotting action adventure. You do, you do start to pick up on the very, very intense character study that the Moon Knight comics are. Um, you do start to realize that in the Moon Knight comic, more than others, sometimes things go bump in the night. It's a little bit spookier. It's a little bit darker. And then you do start to pick up on the humor that is inherent uh, in the Moon Knight comics, which is obviously inherent in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But we started to look at those themes and tones. And that's really when the story started to, to form itself is, again, not looking at a particular issue, but just what's the flavor we want to tell uh, in this Disney Plus offering. I can't wait till we get to the point where Moon Knight is just walking into rooms full of Avengers with sarcasm, like, screw you, I, I got a mission here. Like, let's just, you know, his dry humor from the comics. That's going to be fun. Uh, would, he rip up, would he rip up the card, the Avenger card, or would he not rip it up? Yeah. <laughs> He ripped it up in the pages when he did like, Oh my gosh. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll uh, see where he lands. I do have a team up question, but I'm saving it for later. Uh, <laughs> I do, you guys deliver a classic Moon Knight suit in this. And I want to hear when you guys were designing that, and, and, and I'm sure you went through various versions of concept art and stages. Was there ever like a nervousness of going full comic with it? Or do you think like, you know, we've had a tree, we've had a raccoon, we've had Captain America in a spangly suit. The audiences have accepted what Marvel is giving them now. You know, there wasn't a nervousness when we were talking about the Moon Knight suit because it's so classically drawn for decades. It's just it's there on the page and it's various iterations. And we grabbed little hints of probably all those uh, iterations. But what you do realize what's classic about the Moon Knight suit. You know, I wear white so they see me coming. A white suit, man, that's tough. When you're rolling around the streets and fighting crime, that's the one thing that we worried about more than anything. Just how do we keep this thing clean and cool looking? But um, in terms of the look. Um, man, it's had such classic designs uh, uh, through the years. And then, as you can imagine, the Marvel design team, Ryan um, and Rodney and team, they just, along with Megan, our costume designer, they knocked it out of the park. 
Um, also, Oscar came in. He had some changes. He said, man, I've been studying this through the ages. Can we do this? Can we do that? Can we tweak that? We did. And it was really a group effort. And, and I think it's going to show on the screen. I think people are going to love this costume. And as we know, the MCU does love to update costumes with each new project. Moon Knight has a, a more modern one that's like the black and white and he's got gadgets like the, like the glider plane thing, uh, the moon shape there. Like, do you think that that's some stuff that could be fun to play with? And have you started to fantasize already about what, where he could go, what he could look like in the future? Hey, I, at my heart, I'm a fanboy, so I've been fantasizing about where he may go from here. But, you know, as you can imagine, with all things Marvel, it's a great um, question for our leader, Kevin Feige. Um, but I will say this, because of those tones of those themes that we talked about earlier, the globetrotting action adventure, the character study, the things that go bump in the night, the humor. I don't think there's too many corners of the Marvel Cinematic Universe that Moon Knight can't merge into. Um, so like the rest of the fans, I can't wait to see where he pop up, pops up next. And uh, I'm going to have to ask Kevin that question. I want to ask you about, we get, we get a lot of Mark, we get a lot of Steven. I know, you know, from the comics, there are more personalities to this character. Uh, is there, is there more of that to come? Can you tease maybe a ca certain cab driver? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a great cab driver on the pages. I can't say whether he's in the series or not, but I can tell you this um, on Moon Knight, we're going to keep the audiences guessing until literally the last second. And you never know what you're going to see in this show. Uh, one thing we all want to see, I mean, us fanboys, we want to see this Midnight Suns team come to fruition one day. And it seems like we're getting there, dude. Charlie Cox is here. Like we got a, a whole bunch of opportunities to bring these characters together. Yeah. Uh, have you started to th talk about that at all? Have you uh, thought, you know, these are some, what characters would you like to see him kind of interact with in such an ensemble? Well, I, you know, again, I think Kevin's got some grand plans in his mind, but I will tell you this, as the Marvel Cinematic Universe continues to expand and as certain um, portions of that universe do get a little bit darker and spookier, uh, I do think there's a lot of opportunities for really groovy, cool team-ups, and uh, I can't wait to see them myself. I'm with you. I'm with you. The, the MCU, obviously, it's getting crowded. We're talking about team-ups. There's people all over the place on Earth, heroes, all, especially on Earth, and this one manages to stand on its own without relying on any other characters to carry, help carry the story, make you know big surprises or connections or appearances. Why was it important to make sure Moon Knight's origin story stayed standalone in its own little pocket of the MCU? You know, I will say this, and as you can tell, to the observant viewer, Moon Knight is very much in the MCU, and you'll pick up on those little Easter eggs if you're, if you're watching closely. And, and, and I don't think like th this being kind of a, a standalone opportunity is something we started out um, doing on purpose. But what we did realize that when you do look at those decades of incredible stories, mind bending, freaky, trippy stories that Moon Knight goes uh, through during the decades, we realized it's like once the dust settles and you focus on that character, he did kind of stand alone. And this was his journey. And so it was more it was it was more of an organic exploration than anything. And uh, we do think it's an exploration that the audience is going to enjoy going on on March 30th. And we'll we'll see. We'll see what they say about Moon Knight. I think they're going to have some good things to say. My last question for you, Moon Knight introduces a lot of gods to the MCU and a lot of mythology involving gods. There's a God butcher coming to the MCU. In <laughs> Thor, Love and Thunder. Are you guys the reason we haven't seen a Thor trailer yet? Oh, no, no. I, I've got no control over the other gods or the other universe or the, or the trailers. But uh, another great question for Kevin. I can tell you this, <laughs> Thor's coming. It's going to be amazing. And um, I think these stories are just... The, Kevin, and Lou, Victoria, Brad, the whole team at Marvel tell stories on the grandest scale. And it's just mesmerizing to be part of. I feel blessed. I feel honored to be working with truly the best storytellers on earth. It's awesome. It's awesome, man. If you ever want to dive into this even further, you're welcome on our Phase Zero podcast because I could pick your brain about this all day, but I got to let you get to the next one for now. So thank I'll you. I'll be there, my friend. Tell me when and where. 